Okay, so this is my home dashboard. It's where I keep track of all the devices that are on the network or the ones that I'm accessing, say the web UI or uh, SSH, things like that. There's quite a lot of different stuff and I can delve into different parts of it at some point. Um, some stuff that I'm testing is stuff like uh, Wazoo Server or Wazoo Server uh, and Hulk DOS. Let me give a go to these. Uh, the IP address might have changed, so I'll come back to that in a second. But one of the devices that I've just installed Exponology or Synology on is this one down the bottom. I don't know if you can see it in this uh, in this picture, but I'll enter it now. So it acts exactly like a regular Synology NAS. There's no difference. Um, so if you've got a machine like I'm going to install in a minute, that's a pretty beasty machine. It has an i5, 6, 500K, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's got a GPU, 2.5 gig, 10 gig. Uh, you know, it's, it's a HP system. It's a nice system. If you've got a beastie system like that, this will fit perfectly. And it's free. You know, it's Unraid... I would say is worth the money. I think fifty pound is it's not a lot, but it's a decent amount where you're you get a lot for that fifty pound. But with the Exponology project, this is free. So I'll go into my storage manager. So this system thinks it's a what does it think it is? Go into control panel, uh, update and restore. So that's what it thinks it is a DS one. 821 plus let's see ds1 ds1821 plus so let's see what these are going for at the minute so on amazon that yeah nearly a thousand pounds and this is what an eight bay one two three four five six seven eight an eight bay nas um 2.2 gigahertz yeah, it's got ready for 10 gig or SFP plus this mine has 10 gig in it as well. Um, so it's a decent amount. But the reason I went with this model is this system that I have now does have eight drives in and it has two cache drives. Um, and the, the loader that I'm using, I'm able to put my SSDs as cache. So here is the two SSDs as read and write cache. Um, so yeah, there's the SSD cache group one. And I can install all the same apps. I can do everything a Synology NAS can do, it can do. Um, quicker, it does have certain drivers in it for things like uh, Mellanox Connect X3, which is what's in mine. Uh, it's running on the 10 gig at the minute. And it has a lot of other handy features within the loader so to get started we go to we'll just type on google arc loader so this is to start arc loader and, and it's a really really easy install you click uh, the github page go to the releases and you can also run this in a virtual machine so if you have a really high uh, quality hypervisor you can run it in that as well so you'll click the for vmware it'll be the ova uh, for proxmox you can use rather the ova or the img file i would actually say the ova is slightly easier to use in proxmox and i'll probably make a guide about that uh, for this video i'll concentrate more on actual hardware so you'll download the uh, image file just like this so I've already downloaded it, so I won't need to. So you'll then click on Rufus.exe. You'll need to have a decent enough flash drive. This is a 64 gig uh, USB 3 drive. Very cheap. It was only like £12 on Amazon. Uh, obviously, you'll flash it. Just put your USB stick in. So that's detected. So because I've already flashed mine, I don't need to do it again. But then you'll select the .img file. 
you don't need to unzip it. I've noticed that sometimes when you unzip these files, you can have errors. I'm not 100% too sure why, but I think Rufus likes to unpack it, then install it. So I just leave it uh, zipped, and I've never had any issues while it's been zipped. Uh, you can click the zip file, and then click start, and that will then flash it. Once, once you've done with that, you've basically got a flash drive ready to go. So I'll move on to my phone, and I'll kind of take you through, through the process of how you would set up uh, the Arc Loaded. Again, all automated, very quick. The one thing that you will need to do is pick a model. You do have a selection of models to pick from, depending on how many drives you have. So, okay, so this is the model list. Uh, I'll include this link in the description so that you can have a look at the models that are supported. So there's a there's a quite a big range. Um, any of the RS one two one, they're usually rack systems uh, for that Synology do. Uh, so if I do quite a common one to use is the DS nine. Nine one twenty DS nine seven DS nine eighteen. This is quite a common model to choose from the DS nine uh, twenty plus. I think this is a four bay. Yeah, this is a four bay NAS. Uh, I've actually configured one of these for another system that I have, which was the TerraMaster NAS. So I bought a TerraMaster NAS and I actually config configured this to be a Synology NAS as well uh, if I do control panel update yeah so that's the DS920 plus because they're identical it's got four drives two SSD drives uh, same as the Synology system 2.5 gig um, very very similar hardware so if if you're a bit unsure count how many drives you want to include and then look for a Synology model that's within that range once we've got that uh, we can kind of move forward. I think what I'm going to do is go for rather the DS920 Plus or go for this model again on the HP system. So let's move to my phone and I'll kind of film the rest of the process. So this is the system that we will be using. It's a HP Z240 uh, with 16 gigs of RAM. It's got an NVIDIA GPU, um, three hard drives, 2.5 gig NIC and two SSDs and I've basically set it up so that the system boots off the internal graphics and the rest is uh, just left to the GPU but that's the way I've got it set so that I can kind of optimize that GPU a bit so once the USB is plugged in it will just boot up like this so it's booting the kernel and just give it a minute and then the uh, the loader will actually start so it's trying to see if there's any uh, previous installations or anything that it can boot from and if it doesn't find it it will then go through the installer okay then you'll get onto this splash screen saying that it's actually booted in UEFI uh, it's detected the NIC it's got an address so that's connected on the 2.5 gig NIC uh, and then the internal one is not connected so it's saying that we can go to that web address to configure it or we can use this display output so I'll probably use this display output since we're here now this is where I was saying about choosing a model so choose model now interestingly if you if you look across the top here the things that have stars uh, pluses and X's in basically says what it has and doesn't have so this model the DS1019 plus has the internal GPU working HBA working M.2 working or M.2 cache it doesn't have M.2 volume and it does have USB mount so you can kind of look at different systems and say okay well I really would like my internal GPU to do hardware transcoding so I'm definitely gonna have that model uh, if I go kind of down to 
what I think is a pretty good all-round model which is the DS920 Plus uh, again that's got four drives um, you might want to kind of beef it up and get a couple more drives let me go to so a lot of these they don't have the the iGPU in them so for example this one here doesn't so I might, I might go for this one, the DS920 Plus. If you're fine and you know that you're only going to have four drives, then, you know, it, it's not too bad. But I would like uh, the iGPU working. For some people it's not important, they don't need that. So it's not as important, but I'll go for that model. Click enter. Then it's going to say, which DSM version do you need? So we'll go for the latest, 7.2 then again the latest here it will say do you want to automatically configure it now I'm going to click yes you can click no but then you'll have to set all the individual bits up and you'll have to upload the PAT file with this it automatically does the uh, the PAT file and everything for you so it says that the patching has been successful uh, and what it will do is carry on through the rest of the system and then it will reboot and that's when you can go to the web UI to finish it so it's patching the RAM disk because it's successful let's patch ready yeah so there we are it's going to boot so what I'll do is I'll go back to the computer and uh, we'll kind of finish it off there okay apologies for this but my uh, wife has had to nip out so I've had to uh, look after my son Joshua for a minute so what I've then done is I've gone to the IP address of this system uh, which was 202 and it's ready this is the Synology and it comes up with the Synology uh, device that it is now we can do two things here we can rather automatically install or we can manually install now I do prefer the manual install. Uh, I do prefer the manual install to the automatic install and download. So what we'll do is go to, we'll type in the model DS920 Plus, and it will come up with the Synology website. And then we'll go to, if we just do PAT, PAT. Pat file. So it's the Synology Download Center. There's the NAS DS920 Plus, uh, DSM 7.2.2, and we'll go download. This will be quite quick for me. So yeah, that's downloaded. Then we can go back to Let it go back to the uh, web UI and click on manually uh, install the .pat file and then click the, the DS920 Plus which is there, DS920 Plus and then click OK, click Next. So it's going to tell us here that all of the drives will be deleted. So if you have any data everything will be lost so that's just something to note and then say i understand and continue and then type in uh, your model number ds920 plus and then click delete so this is going to install the pat file and also set everything up and you're pretty much ready to go that's it that's that's all that you need to do <laughs> try to grab everything that's all that you need to do uh after that, you just need to set up the RAID type. There's a few different options for RAID. You have the uh, RAID 1, RAID 2, RAID 10, all them options. But you also have Synology's own SH, uh, SHR, which is its own special RAID system, um, which can be faster and, and usually better. I would tend to go for the Synology, uh, Synology RAID system over the RAID typical raid 
unless you have a specific use case that you do need RAID uh, 1 or RAID 10 or RAID 5 or something like that. Uh, yeah, so on the other screen over here, it's gone black because it's rebooting and it will come back and that's it. We're ready to go.